Uh, just give a brief explanation about, you know, what, what you do, what it is. Okay. Uh, well, it's, in a nutshell, the easiest way that I can explain it is it is a fork of Steam's upstream Proton, Proton Experimental Bleeding Edge. And what we do on top of that is we add, first, we add staging patches. So if you're familiar with wine and wine staging, you know that staging is a separate patch set. Uh, we've gone through all of those patches and figured out pretty much which ones are already applied in Proton or which ones aren't needed because, you know, wine, standard wine is and wine staging are for games and applications. Yeah, so yeah. some of those patches are not uh, meant specifically for gaming. So we've right, pruned right. those out, brought in the extra staging patches that we think are helpful. Uh, we've also added in uh, FFmpeg codecs that Valve themselves can't ship. Mm hmm because you know, as an individual, I am not representing any kind of company. I'm an end user, just like everybody else. And you know, we want our videos to work in our video games. So uh, that's what we added on top of that. Um, and it helps quite a bit because another thing that we do is we add, you know, different game patches or tweaks or uh, things that may not necessarily be immediately able to be added to proton what might need some testing or something like that or somebody says hey i have this like quick hack that works for this specific game we can add it we can test it and then uh, you know i i've i've communicated many many years now with a lot of the people involved with proton mm -hmm. and it's it's been super helpful to have patches that i'm able to throw in test with a big community now which is really really great i'm super thankful for my community um and then give that feedback to those devs that are involved with proton and it, it helps you know it, it helps both i get i get people coming in we get games working and then we shoot it upstream if we can yep, yep. and that's how it works so there's nutshell. so like what's a what's a good example of something that like came from your project and that eventually got upstreamed for you know just maybe maybe not a popular game maybe just some random game it just comes to mind like what's something that wasn't in the upstream project that that sort of became possible because of what you were doing what you were trying to add uh there's been a lot of things over the, the years late, most of the time now uh, i'll start with most of the time now usually what happens is there's a fix that comes in through like dxvk or vkd3d mm -hmm. yeah or even some steam specific fix that somebody has for like a pending merge request and i'll take that fix put it in proton mm -hmm. ge ship it and then we'll get feedback on it and people will be like, oh, this works great. Or, oh, this broke this game or that game. And then that way I give that feedback back and then they can either fix whatever is wrong with the patch or get it upstream if they need to. I saw things work now. Mm -hmm. Before, um, it was mostly I would dig through a lot of the, the wine bugs, like uh, a lot of the Warframe stuff, mm -hmm. like way, way back early in the day. This is a perfect example. So... Warframe, it had DXVK problems. It had uh, audio problems with the 64-bit version of X-Audio. And Warframe was literally what got me into this in the first place. Okay. Because before I before I did Proton GE, I managed a Warframe launching script. Where it, <laughs> yeah, and it did, that, that was way, way back when, before DXVK even existed. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. <laughs> So what happened there is DXVK comes out. And I'm mm -hmm. like, oh, this is awesome. Because at that time, Warframe only worked with OpenGL. Mm -hmm. And uh, it had some problems on NVIDIA cards with rendering things. And then it also had some different problems on the AMD side. So, and this was all through OpenGL. And I was like, well, we could either fuss over OpenGL. It's been this way for years. Or I can reach out to this DXVK dev and say, hey... Do you mind checking and see if you can get Warframe working with DXVK? That'd be really cool. It's got all these current issues. And that's kind of what got my foot in the door to uh, communicating regularly with uh, Philip, you know, the DXVK dev. Yeah. dev. Um, and then, you know, it just, it went from there. But that was one of the main things. Like I got, we got DXVK working with his help. Um, then the same thing happened with F-Audio, although I, I currently don't, have communication with the f audio dev but that's how that's the same thing happened with f audio i reported mm -hmm. the bugs they got it fixed and now f audio it used to be its own component but now it's built into wine mm -hmm. so fun stuff there but that's just one minor example um something that i 
contributed. Uh, what was it? There was a there. Was a, there's been quite a few of the Valve um, build components or Valve runtime. What's it called? It was it was one of the 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 starts with a B. I can't remember the name of it from the top of my head. But anyway, it was a component that was missing from the build environment that they needed. Uh, and I managed to fix that as well as, um, you know, I, once I fixed it, I said, Hey, this is just a little t- small tweak, but I fixed it, submitted it, got it upstreamed. Um, same thing happened with, uh, GST orc, which is for G streamer that we found out that gives a big performance boost. And we were using that in proton GE before we got it upstream. So that was another one that was really useful, but just small things here and there. And then, yeah, it's, it's, they all add up which is really, really helpful, especially over the years now.